Guys, use Paragon.com launch back in 2019. They help you connect to your customers' applications faster. That means you can onboard them quicker. You can deliver more value faster. They've got 100 customers today, paying on average $30,000 per year. Call it somewhere around a $250,000 a month uh, rate up from 80 grand a month just a year ago. So healthy growth, 3X year over year growth. As he looks to be conservative with a Series A cash he raised last year, 13 million bucks. He says, quote, still a large percentage of that still in the bank today with a team of 30 looking to scale uh, this year. We'll see what happens next. Hey folks, my guest today is Brandon Fu. He's the co-founder and CEO of Paragon, previously the founder and CEO, the co-founder and CEO of Polymail, the embedded integration platform for SaaS that has raised 60 million bucks in venture funding. He's a two-time Y Combinator alumni with Forbes 30 under 30 recipient as well and graduated in math and economics from UCLA where he co-founded Bruin Entrepreneurs, UCLA's largest entrepreneurship organization. Brandon, you ready to take us to the top? Absolutely. Thanks for having me, All Nathan. Right. You bet. So it's great having you on. Again, this was what we were just talking about. This it was back in 2017, I think, when you came on to talk about Polymail. What happened to that business? Yeah. So long story short is we built a great product to Polymail. We grew it into a profitable company, um, but one that wasn't necessarily growing at a venture scale rate. So what we did is, you know, we decided to run it as a profitable business. It's uh, still around today. Uh, and uh, eventually had small exits, and uh, I stepped down and eventually transitioned to start Paragon a little over three years ago. That's awesome. Walk me. I mean, so so how did you run the exit or the sale process? I mean, was it a was it a friend who just took it off your hands at cost, or how did you run it? Yeah, so I actually stepped down from the company a little bit before that, but ultimately we sold it to one of our investors. Uh, ah. I so okay, again, it was a very small exit. Um, yeah, but yeah, but you, were, you, you didn't make a bunch of money off of it, right? I mean, this was basically like it has a new home. You can move on to your next thing, right? Interesting. And was this one of the investors? I think you guys raised like seven or eight hundred k, right, in pre-seed or seed money. Was it one of those investors? Yeah, that's right. Can you share who? Uh, it was Ryan Mickel. Interesting. And did he bolt? Or I'm not sure if that's a female or male. Did he? Did they bolt that onto another company, or just they're still running it standalone? Uh, they're still running it. Oh, very and, cool. Uh, I believe it's yeah, still a profitable company today. Okay, so there were just to be clear, the reason you stepped away is because it was clear to you this was never going to be venture scalable, and you really want to go build a venture scalable company. Yeah, again, you know, I think we built a product that people loved. We had tens of thousands of active users, um, but the email space is tough, and I think you know it wasn't necessarily something that had uh, the potential to grow into a venture scale business. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, eventually I stepped down for that reason and uh, started Paragon. And you have to remind me, what was your best month at Polymail in terms of MRR? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, no. All right, let's jump into Paragon. What's it do? Describe a customer and how they're using you today. Yeah, so Paragon is a embedded integration platform for SaaS apps. So what we do is help software companies integrate their products with third-party SaaS applications like Salesforce, Slack, HubSpot, and allow them to get to market faster with new integrations to provide to their customers. So an example of a customer is uh, Saleshood. Uh, some of our audience may be familiar. It's the sales enablement platform. And by nature of their products, uh, they need to integrate with the data in their customers' CRMs like Salesforce and HubSpot, for example. So with Paragon, they're able to easily embed these CRM integrations into their products and provide them as customer-facing integrations that allow them to connect to their customers' CRM data in Salesforce or HubSpot, for example. So is this very similar to like what Kodak does for like embedded finance? They allow finance companies to connect to, you know, QuickBooks or their customers to, to your degree. You've got folks that um, if, if, if a company uses you and they need their customers, CRM, Salesforce access, you will help them build that, basically unlock that API without having to build a custom connection to Salesforce's API. Yeah, so the use case that we serve is similar in that we enable our customers to easily connect to their customers' data in third-party apps like Salesforce, CRMs, accounting systems. Um, our approach, our product approach, is slightly different from Kodat and other vendors in that we provide a fully visual workflow editor along with an SDK that allows our customers to both easily embed the product-facing integrations and we provide embedded UX components example as well. Customers can display for their end users to connect their integrations. We also provide a workflow builder that allows our customers to easily map the data, basically the integration logic that they can then provide for their end users. 
Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this. You love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation this year. Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your FounderPath dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. All right, so the teal is what a VC would pay, yellow is what private equity, and red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now, what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube. All these data are built from real-time valuation data points founders share with us on the show. So traction, 1.2 million, seed round, 3.7 raise, they sold 22% of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only want to see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're going to go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you want to check this tool out, if you want to jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations, or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. Got it. Very interesting. And I guess, help me understand pricing on this. Is it per API call, per integration? What's the average customer pay per month? Yeah, so we price based on usage. So number of integrations, uh, as well as request volume or task volume. Uh, and so our pricing varies depending on a customer's usage of Paragon. Um, but on average, today, our customers are coming in around 30 to 40 K ACV. Uh, that has grown over time. And now we're starting to work more towards mid market and even enterprise. So we're starting to work towards six figure plus ACV range. So someone paying you $30,000 per year, how many integrations do they likely have? And what's their task volume probably look like? Yeah, so typically our 30,000 a year package would include around five integrations up to let's say a million tasks or requests per month. Mm -hmm. And then there's certain features too that we might include on certain tiers that could help uh, determine pricing as well. So let's say a let's say I'm paying you 30k per year, and my I need access to my customer Salesforce, um, mm -hmm. and I need it updated every day. So I'm gonna have to hit. I'm gonna have to use one task basically for that one customer. Let's call it uh, 365 times in a year. Do, do does that count as 365 times? Uh, and so if I wanted to have real time frequency, it's basically like if that's not possible because I'd it'd be too expensive. Uh, so our starting package usually includes up to a million tasks per month and customers can well exceed that volume as well. And we just price based on volume beyond that initial, um, task quota essentially. Um, but the usage can depend based on the users or the customer's use case. So you could be syncing, you know, one request per day, you could be syncing hundreds or even thousands of requests per day too. So it does highly depend on, yeah, the shape of the customer's usage, the type of use cases that they're trying to enable for their customers. I see. Okay. Put all this on a timeline for me. When did you launch the business? Yeah. So we started Paragon in the end of 2019. We're about three and a half years old now, I think. Uh, we raised, uh, we went through Y Combinator in winter 2020. Uh, I raised a small seed round, about two, $3 million back then. And I uh, just raised our Series A, $13 million Series A in uh, the spring of last year. So spring today we're year. about 30 employees uh, and growing and uh, very excited about where we're at today. That's awesome. So I guess take me back to the seed in 2020. You, you said you raised 2.5 there. Yeah, a little over 2 million. 
and, and most folks in their you know seed pre seed rounds you know back in those days were selling fifteen to twenty percent of the company. Were you sort of in that same range? Um, around that range, uh, we did go through Y Combinator, so that factors into that a little bit. Um, but well, but most people though, when they go through YC, they'll give YC the premium, right? They'll the, the whatever it is, one hundred fifty k for seven percent, but they won't let other investors come in at that same quote lower valuation. Did you have? Did you take the full two point five at the YC valuation? Yeah, I can't disclose exactly, but it was around the typical range that you would see for a seed round. Uh, it was around the typical range that you would see for a seed round. Um, well, I guess let me put it this way. Um, 150000 for 7% of your company is extremely dilutive. Uh, in fact, I think that actually the, the total valuation would be under $2 million if you let everyone come in at that on those terms. So how did you manage that? Yeah. So our seed investors, excluding YC, were at a different valuation, of course. Okay, so that's what I was we, asking. We consider our seed round all funding raised, including YC, averaging that ownership percentage roughly around the range of what you would see for a typical seed round. I see. I see. Okay, got it. You sell 15 to 20% of the company, which means that you know it's a round evaluation of 10, 15 million, something like that. Around that range. Fast forward, why Series A in spring of last year? What makes this company expensive to grow? Yeah, so first of all, I think we hit an inflection point last year where we had uh, grown at a nice rate. We validated that you know this is really a problem that customers have in the market, and that we have a product that customers love using. And uh, because of that, you know, we felt it was a good time for us to pursue a Series A. Um, you know, in terms of growth for us, there's really two areas of investment. Um, engineering and go to market. So as far as engineering, um, you know, we are building integrations on behalf of our customers. And that requires really a dedicated integrations team, which we um, essentially utilize to build and maintain the integrations that our customers are then using through their products through Paragon as well. Well, mm -hmm. um, so we're able to use you know the funding from our Series A in order to um, you know invest into the products, growing our integration catalog, growing the products and our features in general. On the go-to-market side, um, you know we are always well. I would say before our Series A, we were in a position where it was really just me and I think one account executive who was leading sales. Yeah. Um, so with that <laughs> we were able to validate. You know, we we're able to get customers. You know, customers are buying the product. We're able to validate that. You know, we have a go-to-market motion at least the early workings of one that works. And then, uh, you know, today after raising our series A, I think we're really in a phase where uh, we're looking to scale from one to a hundred and really build the team and the organization, the playbook that can scale our go-to-market strategy from today into the next few years, really transition from that founder led model. And then again, in series A, most companies are selling 10 to 15% to your company. Were you sort of in that same range? Uh, around that range. Okay. Take me back to the first customer. How'd you get them? Yeah. So the great thing about the YC network is that you have a lot of folks who are uh, eager to try your product. And um, I think the YC network is over a thousand companies today. Uh, we started off by really selling to other companies in our batch, other YC founders that we knew. And because the problem that we're solving is one that inherently every SaaS company has. Uh, we got a lot of our early customers from our YC network, friends, the companies in the batch, and we're really able to uh, grow, start growing from there. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the negatives that you'll hear from buyers when they're looking at acquiring a company that was run through YC is when they go in and do the DD after the term sheet signing and they see the customer list and it's a bunch of other YC companies. They go, man, are these companies really getting value here or are they just buying it because it's VC dollars being traded back and forth? And sometimes I've seen it hurt valuation. Would you agree or disagree with that? Uh, I could see why people would think that, um, but I would say that while we started with our initial customer base in the YC community, we have in the last couple of years grown pretty far beyond that. And I think we've definitely extended the reach of our go-to-market and our customer base uh, well beyond just the YC community. That's great. So how many customers are you serving today? Yeah, so we work with just over 100 customers today around the world and uh, been growing nicely over the last couple of years. Yeah, no, that's great. 100 customers at that ACV you said earlier means you're doing, what is that, like 250 grand a month in revenue, something like that? Uh, I can't disclose our revenue exactly, but uh, around that range. That's awesome. And if you're around 250 grand a month today in revenue, where were you a year ago so we can look at growth rate? So we grew by a little bit uh, close to 3x in the last year. So oh, we wow. started last 
yeah, last year around, I'd say the 1 million ERR range. Yep. Yep. That, yep. That's great. And then, okay. So it took you basically from 2019 to 2022 to break that million dollar run rate range. Um, any learnings from there? Is there a way that you could have done that faster looking back or was it going to always take three years no matter what? We definitely went through several product iterations since we first started at Paragon. So the products, as we know it today, Paragon, um, really we launched in the market at the beginning of 2021. So we've been in the market now for about two years, just over two years. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely a lot of learnings from that uh, you know, first year of really building, iterating, talking to customers, seeing what works. That's, I think, ultimately led us to you know, what uh, we've built today and what we've learned about our market, our customers, and what they're trying to achieve with Paragon. And Brandon, when you did your seed round, did you guys set up an ESOP pool? Uh, did we set up what, sorry? An employee stock option pool? Uh, not at our seed round, but at our Series A. Okay, so question for you, right? If you were doing a million last year, call it a run rate, and you raised, you know, you sold about 10% when you raised 13 million, that would put you at a valuation of call it somewhere north of 100 million bucks or about 120x multiple. No one is getting that now today. The market has really changed. And you're seeing a lot of these folks that raised these premium valuations 12 months ago now having to deal with morale issues because every single option every employee owns is way underwater. How do you think about that? Well, I can't disclose our uh, exact valuation to Series A, but I will say that it's uh, not exactly the range that you uh, stated. Oh, okay. Sorry. I mean, even if it was more conservative, right? I guess even fast growing SaaS companies today, the best ones are getting only like eight, nine, ten x. You are way above. Let's just put it this way: you are way above that, right? Maybe you were at like a forty or fifty x instead of a hundred x. But this question is still the same. Yeah. So look, I think that, you know, the folks that we have on our team and, you know, we have an amazing team of incredibly talented folks, I think are here really because they believe in the long-term vision of Paragon and what we're doing and really the opportunity that lies ahead of us in the market. I think that if we are successful in executing our vision, uh, Paragon will become the default solution for customers building integrations. Um, and so I think, you know, our, we and our team by extension are really focused on that long-term vision more so than the day-to-day -day or year-to-year -year fluctuations of the market. And I would say that ultimately, um, you know, our team has not uh, really expressed concern. And I think that we are not concerned about, you know, seeing some of what uh, the market may be showing us, you know, in these few years, we know the market changes, you know, year to year, but ultimately we're focused on, I think really the potential and the opportunity of what we can achieve at Paragon in the long term, And um, that's what we're most excited about. How conservative are you being with cash? Do you still have most of the 13 million in the bank? Yeah, so uh, we do have a large percentage of our Series A funding. Um, I would say that, uh, especially in the last few quarters, we've been increasingly focused on efficiency, and we have managed to improve along all of our efficiency metrics, including cost of acquisition, burn multiple, gross margins. And I think we still have a way to improve. We still have room to improve, certainly, but that has become a core focus for us as a business, not only growth at all costs, but growth with increasing efficiency. Brandon, some would argue we're going into a recession, you know, with that in mind, I mean, are you comfortable when you net burn 200, 300 grand a month or what are you optimizing net burn for right now? Yeah, so I can't share those numbers exactly, but like I said, we are focused on continuing to improve our efficiency across the board in go to market in operations, product and engineering. And so that is uh, certainly a top priority for us. We are fortunate having just raised our Series A last year that we are well capitalized and I think very well positioned to enter the next few years of the economy where you know, no one knows what's going to happen, right? Um, but I think that we're also you know, uniquely positioned to help a lot of companies in this type of um, you know, market where a lot of companies are looking to do more with less, where they may need to still get to market with new integrations, but they may not be able to bring on new engineers in order to do so. And I think that's a position where Paragon is really able to help these companies accelerate their products, their integration strategy, and do so in a way that's far more efficient, which everyone is, you know, Know, I think, uh, looking to do today. Uh, Brandon, on that note, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, uh, Steve Jobs Biography by Walter Isaacson. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, I've always been inspired by Stuart Butterfield at Slack, uh, although he did just recently step down. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building Paragon? Uh, I'll give you two, both YC companies, Vimcal for calendar and Sunsama for task management. Use them both every day.
Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? I try to get eight, um, okay. usually six or seven, but I think sleep is incredibly important and I try to get eight if I can. And Brandon, what's your situation? Married, single, kids? I am married uh, for the last two and a half years um, and no kids yet. Uh, no kids. And how old are you? Essentially on the roadmap. Uh, I'm 31 as of this month. Congrats. Happy birthday. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Uh, if I could go back when I was 20, I would probably drop out of school and join a startup so I could better learn how to start my own in the future. Guys, use Paragon.com launched back in 2019. They help you connect to your customers' applications faster. That means you can onboard them quicker. You can deliver more value faster. They've got 100 customers today paying on average $30,000 per year. Call it somewhere around a $250,000 a month uh, rate up from 80 grand a month just a year ago. So healthy growth, 3x year over year growth. As he looks to be conservative with a Series A cash he raised last year, 13 million bucks. He says, quote, still a large percentage of that still in the bank today with a team of 30 looking to scale uh, this year. We'll see what happens next. Brandon, thanks for taking us to the top. Thanks for having me, Nathan. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.